Okay, welcome back to Flames of Rekka Anime Review Part 2. This one I'm viewing episodes 14 and 21, despite the fact 21 is technically not the end of a particular portion of the, of, of the arc, basically, this thing covers. Yeah, for pretty much this point to so the rest of the series, we're pretty much covering the tournament arc. Yes, the underground tournament arc, which they'll bring up to episode 16. Yep, 14 and 15 essentially put is a two-parter explaining Rekka's backstory. The episode starts off with the Rekka game, with the course is the high school teacher and Gonkiko go to visit Kagahoshi at her mansion. Now, when I heard about this, I was like, okay, is this some grand, like, Japanese-style mansion? No, not really. How they get to is quite interesting. They basically find a Jesuit statue, basically told by telepathy, Turn the thing counterclockwise. Daemon basically volunteers, just because he's the strongest one, basically buff wise, and he turns it and open the tunnel. Yep, but while this is going on, a man from Korai's group spies on him and forms three idiots who call themselves, they, they show up later, the further away is the three ravens. Though the big bulky guy versus mistakenly his three stooges. Yet, these guys only appear for this two-parter and they don't really appear after this. Not that I can think of no. Yep, so they walk to the tunnel and of course the teacher basically notes that, well, because he's an expert on the Hokage clan. And like, oh yeah, these things were basically, they've been here for centuries. Yeah, this first, when, when, I, when I saw this particular tunnel, like in the anime, like, I'm thinking though, yeah, this is nothing new. A lot of fiction tends to do this, basically. A lot of the time, you the automatic flame just automatically light up. And you see Kogahashi, uh, Kogahashi's mansion, and it's an old house that basically is falling apart. Apparently, it was a hideaway for the Hokage. And apparently, only the leaders of Hokage actually knew about this place. Yep. And Kagahoshi reveals her real name is... Kagro. Yep. Like, she starts her story off with the birth of Rekka. Yep. Where she basically gave birth to Rekka. Uh, and it basically is his father, who is actually the 26th leader of the Hokage clan. And everybody's like, celebrating the birth of the child. And then his ex goes His firstborn, who was, all, who was also apparently at the time the heir of the clan because he possessed fire. But last, and of course, she showed up. She decided to give her a present. Like, what was the present? A bag full of skulls. Why the heck did he show up the idea? I have no idea who the heck these people were. I don't think the series are about to explain who the heck these people were in the first place. Mm hmm. Then, of course, she just basically shoot off till she's going to get out by her ex-husband. Yeah, I think it's her ex-husband, despite the fact she was... Probably because of her attitude, and probably because that he wanted to couldn't stand her, so he basically with Kagro, who, smoking hot woman she is, and then a week, week after, basically, Rekka's birth, he started to develop flame powers. Yep. So... Get rid of the firstborn because then gets a cursed child. Like Kagero basically want, wants to spare Rana. That's her name. She's she's Kor Koranai's mother. She wants Rekka to die. Nope. Everybody agrees Koranai should die. Like you have a potion. She's like nah. And about the killer. And then and then she's like no, don't kill her. So basically she's like basically banished in a way, not from the village per se. Basically in the outskirts. Where she is, and apparently she's lived there for a whole year, where, and then and they jump ahead one year later, where she's dying, and she's basically almost rags. She's basically skin and bones because she doesn't want to eat at all. Her son has basically been beat up several times because, well, and also her status as lady has been stripped from her due to the fact she kept flagging around the fact, oh yeah, I have the heir to the clan. Yep. And then Koronai basically comes with the stupid idea. Now, he is roughly five years old at this point. When he first showed up, he was four. Because was mentioned, he's four years older than Rekka. 
So he comes up with the stupid idea to get basically his back in position by killing Rekka, a one-year-old baby. How did he want to accomplish this? Well, he wanted to stab him. And thank you, anime, for not showing this. You see the show a shadow of this. Like, you hear people screaming at him for doing this. What did he do? He took a knife and stabbed right through Baby Rekka's cheek, right to his freaking mouth. Yeah, and that's the reason why he wears a bandage over his cheek. Yep. So, Karai basically was sent to prison. As what happened to Rena, she possibly died. They don't really know what happened to her after this. Yeah, it's particularly a little weird. They don't really say anything at all. It's possible she was killed with the rest of Kai clan when, of course, the Demon General shows up with his 10,000 strong army. Oh yeah, and here's the thing. He wants to basically massacre the entire clan. Why? To get their hands on their items, the Magogon. So, Leo's like, okay, they want us so badly because they can figure though, if they, even if they take a good number of them, they will kill them with their arrows. So, he figured, leave them all behind, keep them all protected, and they fight basically with their regular ninja arms. And they get pretty much all slaughtered anyways. Leo's the only one who actually to fight where he's killed with basically, he's basically fired upon with about half a dozen arrows getting to him, and then a freaking spear takes him out. Oh yeah, it's mentioned by Kagero that she he was actually 32 when he died. So that means when Rekka was born, he was 31. So that kind of means also that when his first born, when Kuranai was born, that means he was 27 when he was born. Yep. So yeah, so she basically decided to want to save Rekka. So she activated a forbidden spell taught to her by one of the elders of the village who was kind of a mentor to Rekka's biological father. So, she activated a time spell that sent 400 years in the future. Yep. As what happens next point after that, that's not explained to the next episode. And of course, Korra had to have fall into the future. Though they have two different places, it's explained in the following episode that Rekka ended up with the man who raised him, who was a fireworks maker, and of course, Korra ended up with the evil... The evil rich man who was pretty much the main villain of the series and became his adopted son. Mm -hmm. Yep. Though it's never explained what gave, what gave him the idea to have more earrings. Now, I get the whole earring thing. Why the purple lipstick? I have no idea. Are we implying this character might be gay? I have no idea. Even after the whole story is finished, and of course, Rekka is of course mad about it, the three idiots show up. And the one who basically has wings. Rekka pretty much wops the floor with him. Daemon goes after the big bulky guy. And Fuku goes after the other guy. And they beat him really easily. And of course they take the Magogon. Yeah, they take all their weapons. And then of course, well, they decide to do some training after this. I guess Strong was, who knows, they might come back. So... Rekka and the princess decide they go off to a different place so she can basically train with basically control his dragons. Daemon basically is just back up his things. Though his mother is like, hey, get down here. It's like, I don't want to help. And then, of course, t uh, someone shows up and say, can you go up there and basically hit my, hit, hit my idiot son? <laughs> yeah. And, and then, of course, they get up there and who would the people show up? Why, it's Gunko and Fuko. Yep, and Fuko basically hits Daemon in the head. It's like, what'd you do that for? Auntie told me to. <laughs> it's something, though, he calls Daemon's mother Auntie. He also calls, she also calls, later on, she calls Fuko Auntie as well. Probably because, well, older, I would I wouldn't, I would think it'd be better to call her Big Sis because she's not that much older than Ganko. Maybe about 10 years, not like 30 like the other one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm sure Daemon's mother has no problem with, Gun with Gunko because she's an adorable little girl. I think she's roughly about six or seven. I'm not sure exactly how old she is. So basically, Pax thinks like goes to train. He's like, "Where do you train?" Okay, he doesn't really know. So Fuku volunteers to train with him, and they go to the woods, train together, and they have two of the weapons taken from those two idiot from those three idiots. They take the claw and some other and a big like hook and like hook and chain. And so they go to the mountains and do some training. And this lasts for about one episode, the whole training thing. And then basically a dog shows up as a messenger to 
invite them to the underground tournament. Yeah, this is set up in a previous scene by the main villain of the series. I don't remember the guy's name. Where he's like, he's basically an evil businessman who basically wants to control the world and rule and use his money while he's basically a lie. He wants eternal life. He thinks that he thinks Princess basically has that power. All she can do is heal people. She can't exactly grab people for someone eternal life. Yep. So Coronet basically goes he's informed about what happened in episode thirteen when the mansion burned down. He's basically upset by it. After all, it was his freaking property got burned down. So he thinks of a good idea. Resurrect the underground tournament. The actual name of this tournament it now they call it the underground tournament in the anime. English sub. It's referred to as the Orotapu Sejusan. Yes. And this tournament takes up the rest of the series. Why the heck they set it in with this particular thing? I have no idea. In the manga, this lasted for a long, I mean, long period of time. This must have lasted about 200 chapters. Like, oh my gosh. I was reading this arc. It, like, took so freaking long. Like, okay. They basically, now... When they meet for this tournament, basically, Dama Rufuka basically got stronger. Rekka, of course, got a couple tattoos on his arm. And, of course, well, Takoya basically also trained as well. He got stronger, though he did show up with new moves until the actual first battle. He, of course, got a couple new tattoos on his arm. Basically, out of the eight dragons, he's only able to control two of them because six, the air six is basically untamable somewhat. Though, he's able to do hand signs now, which, okay, that's interesting. Which makes it the third or fourth series I've seen we have a character doing hand signs. The only series I've seen that actually you see a character do this would use like hand signs. I've seen it not only for this series. They did it for Naruto, Naruto Shippuden, Seven Daily Sins. And I think that's it. That's the only series I could think of where they actually do hand signs. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think, though. I don't think it's any other series I've watched where you see characters doing hand signs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, no. I can't think of any. Not, not I've watched. I know Bleach didn't have it because they ever used freaking swords. Yep. And I know for a fact it didn't happen in One Piece. So I know it didn't happen there. What about Fairy Tale? Well, not really, no. I mean, you have Levy who does a little thing with the brushing a script art but that's not hand signs yeah so it's great we see a series of characters with hand signs so he's able to take out the the dry the dog no problem and take out two members of coronized assassination squad who gunko basically recognized right away and they're there just to deliver a message and they get away no problem so they participate in the tournament and then the tournament begins the very next episode though it's more like a prelude to the tournament as well so they volunteer and they offer a prize. So what's the prize that a man offer up? The princess. Because of the high healing power she has. Like, they, they jokingly think, oh yeah, what about Fugo's breast or cook the cookies? Like, no, it's basically the princess. And she, of course, agrees to it. Now, Gunko shows up too. Yeah, despite the fact originally in the manga, she actually did not show up at all. Yeah, I don't mind this at all. Yes, it's not the first time they actually add a character to an arc that they were not originally there for. Well, in the case of a tournament. They did the same thing in Yu Hakushu, where they swapped out the main character's mother with, Kura, with uh, Kurabara's sister. That probably made a lot more sense, basically, to do than, let's say, the main character's mother. Who at that point was about 28, 29. This is probably making a lot more sense. Plus, probably because of both smokers. Yep. And in the case of this series, well, yeah, it's perfectly fine. Kagura shows up too as a she got a spectator one. Yeah, and also the little boy who was from the previous arc. He gets the invitation too, but you don't see him for a little while. He doesn't show up a bit later if I looked up. But I'll get to the episode probably in the next review. Mm hmm. So, they sign up, and of course they have a silver pill around, having the whole team just take out a bunch of, like, weak, in basically a bunch of weak grunts. Kind of like the start of the previous arc, where they basically storm the mansion, and take out a bunch of weak guys, and spend about 
two minutes. And then they go in and the episode 18 begins the actual matches. First match, Tagoya versus a guy versus has his match. His match lasts for about two episodes. Mm-hmm. Though he's able to defeat his opponent at toward the by halfway through the second episode, episode 19. Excuse me. And then Fuko starts here for a fight with a guy who's somewhat of a pervert. And a very evil individual. Yep. Yeah, at one point he asked her, what's her breast size? She says D-cup and a rocking body. He's like, ooh, that makes me interesting. Then he starts slicing up her freaking clothes in the middle of the public. Yep. I mean, she also basically at one point takes out crystal, which is from the claw thing, puts it in her own Magogon, which basically summons wind, forms the claws. You see the mood thing around? And despite all the stuff basically she's doing, of course, she at one point she doesn't think flying. But eventually gets gets the guy. But not before he basically shreds her down to her underwear to the point where she's basically wearing a strapless bra and a pair of panties. Oh, yeah, and her shoes. And that's it. Like, oh, my gosh. Eventually he's beaten, like... Yeah, first at one point thing he's beaten, then of course that's when he strips the whole underwear thing. Then he, well, when he does that, that's when he put on put a pair of Freddy Krueger claws. Yeah, I'm not kidding. These, these look like the claws Freddy Krueger uses from the Nightmare Elm Street series. If you see these things, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Yep. So he basically shreds her clothes, like, almost to the point where you can almost see a breast. Though not the first time this has happened to her. Yeah, Rekka actually was one burned most of her clothes the first, in, her, in technically her third at, in third episode of the series. At least this time, she's actually staying in her underwear this time. Yep, and then you have next match. You have, well, before they get to that one, they have a brief fight. We have Daemon dig on his opponent. Who at one point was basically like, like he was Mr. Fantastic with his body's made rubber. Though it turns out it's a Magogon in his mouth. Well, eventually he decided some of his weapon, and then the match basically turns to a draw. It was basically at this point, by the time Rekka starts to fight, it's already like two like two wins and one draw. Not bad. Rekka takes on this guy for about two episodes. Like, it starts like toward the end of episode 20, and it does wrap up to the end of episode 21. And it's a really good fight. Mm-hmm. Yep. And... Oh yeah, and of course, well, before the match starts, he walks over to Fun- to Funko, wraps bandage around her arm, and then gives him gives her her basically top half of his outfit as an apology for the idiot for the evil man who had to basically come there because he's basically kind of revealed a little bit of the backstory of the school where apparently they're not a group of killers that he has no choice but to kill, and he wonders for the school's reputation. He and Rekka put on a very good fight throughout this whole throughout episode 21, and then of course Rekka comes out with this new move, where he basically sounds like a big blade out of his, out of his gauntlet. Though first time he, when they show off, they basically show off basically the moves, like some of the fireworks, and then he does it, and possibly sets up the next team they're gonna fight in the next round. With one one of the people having to be the old man that he met back in episode 16, actually, the extra person met back in episode 13. Yep. And of course, this guy basically his power. Sagetsu, I think his name is. Right, his name. Sagetsu. I want. I want to make sure I get this name right. It is. Sacho. Yeah. Yep. So, he tries to wind. Now, apparently, he only can fight for ten minutes because of, because of his chest wound he suffered. I would say about a couple of years prior to events of the series because I because from the flashback it looked like it was not that far back, all because he took down a bunch of basically corrupt students who he had killing, right in front of possibly his girlfriend. Yeah, they don't really explain who the heck this person. They might explain a little bit later, but yeah, I think this girl might be his girlfriend, Either his girlfriend or his sister, possibly his girlfriend. <laughs> Though she of course get, he of course get, gets the. Thousand cranes. Still, Rekka is able to defeat them thanks to, well, putting his, his part of his dragon in the ground. Though he's able to basically burn all of them, and of course he takes him down a couple times basically during the fight. 
Sucho want one of the stuff to fight because he want Rekka to die. But Rekka's able to do it. Damon, how he got to make sure the ref didn't stop his fight, was by grabbing her butt. Yep. Yeah, he grabbed her butt. Fuko didn't have a really big problem with it at all. And also, during Fuko's match, Damon and Rekka got their nosebleed. Yep, because typical male people in it. Uh, and anytime you have characters who are somewhat perverts, their nose bleed. Yes, this is a common trope in anime. And apparently they decided to get rid of it in Super with, with Roshi by have teaching to make sure he, he still is a pervert, yes. But he got rid of the whole nose bleed. It took him a while, but he did. Mm-hmm. Though for Rekka, it's actually the second time in the series his his nose has actually had a nosebleed. For Damon, it was the first time I can think of that's happened at this point in the series. Yep. And despite the fact that the Hokage actually won, basically, despite the fact that they have four people against five, he wanted the challenge the leader of the group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the leader of the core and I, the, what's the name of the school? The... Kukai, yeah, challenged the leader because he really wanted the face, and though he actually first met this guy back in episode 17, he seemed like a really nice guy, and that's when he first met Sucho. Yep, and they're just basically just slouching outside the comp, like outside the building, and there's like hundreds of guards. The place is huge, and I don't think this is the same place, and apparently... When the this when the main villain of the series makes a speech, he does it in a nearby mansion. Like, how many mansions does this guy own? Yep, and of course people play bets because well, oh yeah, apparently this tournament. Here's the thing about this tournament: it's actually illegal. It's an underground death tournament. Yep. <laughs> yep, and pretty much, like episode twenty one ends basically with. Him challenge leader, and well, that's pretty much it when it comes to these episodes. Basically, you have eight really good episodes, and I'm looking forward to reviewing more. Yep, at this point, now the kind of reason why I decided to start reviewing the second part with this episode because with episode 21 that means I am, despite the fact that, that this particular thing goes on, has this particular has officially wrapped up yet, I decided to review at this point in time. Because we're halfway through the series. Yes, halfway through a 42-episode series. So, as for the next review, probably 9 to episode 30 at this point. Yeah, probably not. Probably going to cover probably 22 to 30. Probably, yes. It depends upon... It depends upon, like, if at some point, like, a round ends. Or if somehow a match doesn't end by the time we get to that particular episode... I'll probably review the following episode as well, just to get that, just get the full just as match. I'd say of the matches they've shown so far in this thing, I would say the best one so far out of the four matches is probably Sucho versus Rekka. Great, it was probably the best match. Out of the entire thing. Yeah, as for the other matches... First match was actually pretty okay. Uh, probably by far the oddest match is Fuko's match, but it's not exactly the darkest episode of this. It's not exactly the darkest episode of this particular portion of episodes. No, because she just gained. Yeah, as for having a character who's a pervert, who's a villain, yeah, second time this series has happened, at least that the character entirely stripped down on women. And of course, the guy was known for that. Though I've heard the guy does come back later. Mm-hmm. Yep, I would say, probably for some people, if they watch this series, they probably think that episode 20 is probably the most offensive, one of the most offensive series, the whole series, because the fact you have one of the people who leads the series being stripped down to her underwear, well, shredded down to her underwear by a perverted, by a perverted fighter. Yeah. And of course, she also be called ugly by the guy. Now, Fuku is a beautiful woman. And Damon knows it because he has a thing for her. Though I don't really know if these two basically have... I don't think these two end up together at the end of the series. I know what happens with Rekka and the Princess. Not much happened with Damon and Fuko. I think I think of no. 
Though, basically, when I get time to my next arc, it's like, my gosh, really weird things happened in the last two arcs of the series in the manga. Yeah, where there's a lot more nudity and some development to Wreck of the Princess. I'll talk about that in a later video, okay? So, yeah, that's it for this particular review. My next review is a movie review of Black Panther, released just last year and a nominee for Best Picture. Yep, but do the next review. Bye.